Hello everybody, welcome to a history of 78s. You might be asking, what's a 78? That's a fair question because even people my age, well, we knew what 78s were, but they were not part of our lives. In fact, uh, the 78s were no longer produced regularly four years after I was born, before I even started school. Any flat disc record made between 1898 and until the late 50s, about 55, uh, and playing at a speed around 78 revolutions per minute were ref are referred to today as 78s. Now, before this time, before 78s were kind of established, uh, in fact, before there was a specific standard uh, speed, records were anywhere from 78 to 80 revolutions per minute, and that made a difference. If you had a re record player that played about an 80 revolutions per minute and you bought a recording at 78, well, it would sound just a little bit too fast and a little bit too high. Okay. On the other hand, if you had a record player that played at 78 uh, RPM and you bought a recording that was made at about 80, it would be a little bit slow and a little bit uh, lower key. So, you know, it wasn't that bad, especially, you know, the novelty of just being able to play music in your own home anytime you wanted was huge initially. And people got by with that. Um, you know, the record industry got by with that. But eventually people wanted a standard so that you could count on a recording sounding right, uh, especially for those who had perfect pitch and things that drove them crazy. Um, and so the 78... Uh, a spe very specific 78 speed was established. We'll talk more about that in the next episode because uh, it involves math and engineering and all kinds of things. Um, I always thought 78s were chosen, or the 78 speed was chosen because um, of the, the convergence of, of two things. If you went too slow, you didn't have much quality because there wasn't much electronics involved in making a recording initially. It was pretty much what goes into the tube and gets jiggled around or you know on the on the record uh, in response to that sound and what and, and then playing back is the same thing. The needle is red and it's amplified uh, back into a, a horn. That was what you got you know and and you were dependent completely on the sensitivity of the needle during the recording and during playback to determine the quality so you didn't want it to be too slow because it just wouldn't sound good 78 was about as slow as you wanted to go to get good quality you didn't want to go too fast either though because you couldn't get a full song on a, on a record. It had the record would have to be you know bigger than the room uh, to get a full song on it if you went really fast. So in a way 78 was kind of a compromise but the specific speed chosen as a standard uh, was all about engineering and math and again we'll talk more about that next time. What I want to do in this series is I want to get into a lot of the details of recordings of records or phonograph records, as they were called initially, of course. We'll get into a little bit of the history of, of, uh, of how the phonograph record came to be used to, to record music and, and comedy and other, and other things um, for you to play in your own home. But we'll also get into the choice of 78s, the content of the 78s. Um, during the time when they were popular and the evolution uh, from 78s to 33s and 45s and vinyl records. We'll talk about all of those things in, in turn. But, but a big part of each of these episodes, I want to play a, um, a disc for you because I want you to hear in totality what kinds of things were recorded in, in, during certain times, during certain years, um, and and what kinds of things were considered entertaining, uh, which will be revealed in some of the comedy uh, records. So it's a twofold purpose. Yes, we want to talk about the history of 78s, but part of understanding the history of 78s is also hearing some of the 78 recordings made primarily, I think, in the, uh, the 1910s and the 1920s. Um, we'll see as we go, because I have a, a source that, that, that tells me uh, 
by number what uh, what records uh, when a record was recorded and some information about it so the first recording i want to play in fact is is the one i held up uh for you it's called a broadway Me medley and it is played on an instrument which is somewhat reviled these days but which i personally happen to enjoy um an, an italian accordionist by the name of Pietro Deiro. Now, that's my uh, admittedly amateur pronunciation, uh, but I think that's fairly accurate. Uh, turns out he recorded a lot of, made a lot of accordion uh, uh, records, but his, his older brother made even more. So the Deiros uh, were um, um, uh, accordion masters who uh, made a lot of recordings for people to bring into their homes. The recording was a very popular instrument uh, in the early 1900s. Um, I know I'm Scandinavian. I know Scandinavians love the accordion, but uh, but of course the Italians, um, you know, the gondola with the accordion with the I, I think they use a different name for that for those, but um, there were. Uh, the accordion was a fairly popular instrument in, uh, throughout all of Europe and because of that uh, in America at the time as well. So let's listen to the Broadway medley uh, by accordionist Pietro Deiro. This was recorded in 1913. Thank you, Pietro. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll play. Uh, we'll play the B side of that uh, on the way out. You'll hear a little bit of that. Um, the duration of seventy-eight RPM recordings depends on the size of the disc. There are the ten-inch discs that that this recording was on, and then there are twelve-inch discs. Got to get them far enough away so you can see the difference. 
Um, the uh, the 10 inch discs are about three minutes and the uh, 12 inch discs are four, uh, well, four or five minutes uh, per side. And there's two sides to each, uh, to each record. So uh, sometimes in the history of recordings, um, an artist would record, uh, would release a single uh, either a 78 or in later years a 45 on side A and the one that they thought was going to be big and it turned out side B was more popular. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes even the recording executives and the artists uh, were fooled uh, by, by what was popular and what was not. Um, I, I noticed in detail that uh, it, was, it wasn't until about 1910 that most records uh, were recorded at about 78 to 80. Before that, it was anybody's guess. Basically, you had to buy a, a phonograph, phonograph and uh, records that were recorded at the same speed the phonograph played. By 1910, you could buy a phonograph or a record player uh, and be fairly confident that any record you buy, bought would play fairly accurately, not completely accurately. And it wasn't until 1925 that a very specific speed was chosen and became the standard for recording and for playback. And that's very important because you have to understand the recording industry was making an investment in the recording machines and the consumers were willing to make an investment in the phonograph player if they knew they could play any any record they, they that they could buy uh, that that it would play on that on that machine. That's something that has been a factor ever since uh, on every piece of equipment, every every new thing that came along, uh, tapes, um, uh, VHS uh, or Beta. Um, uh, cassettes, eight tracks, all of those, without a standard, consumers just won't buy that uh, anymore. Uh, it, 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 they got away with it a few years uh, in the early years because, like I said, it was such a novelty to be able to, uh, to, uh, to buy a record, take it home, and play it any time you wanted. You didn't have to wait for the radio or hope the radio would play it uh, or hope that you could hear it at a, at a live, uh, live band show. Um, so the 78s um, really were kind of part of the lexicon fairly early on, certainly by the early 1900s, but it became a standard in 1925 and remained a standard for 25 to 30 years. That's pretty good for standards. Um, a, a word about the present situation. Um, I read recently that vinyl recordings uh, are actually outselling CDs. For 20 years, Nobody wanted anything to do with vinyl records. Uh, CDs were all the rage. And now uh, CD sales apparently have dropped. And uh, vinyl, I knew vinyl uh, recordings were on the rise because of people who wanted them for nostalgic purposes to remember uh, records. And there are purists who insist that, insist that a, uh, the analog sound of a record uh, is different, possibly better than the more precise but perhaps uh, too pristine sound of a digital recording. Uh, that has also always been the case. Um, you know, of course the best is, is a live performance, but we can't all do that uh, anytime we want. Um, none of us can do that anytime we want. We're dependent on a group who's willing to play at any, at any moment. Radio kind of did that for quite a few years. Uh, the early years of radio, you, uh, you didn't get music unless you had a live band in the studio playing the music. Um, and one of the reasons for that was because the recording industry would not let radio stations play records, uh, or at least uh, discourage that. And we may talk about some of those fights too, because there were some very interesting things uh, that are still in effect today because of that uh, record industry um, ban on, on uh, radio stations playing records initially. So the recording industry has a, a rich <laughs> a history um, and uh, a little bit of a shady history as well, a very competitive history, um, and and we may we may talk about some of that too as we as we get we get time for that. Well, uh, my time is up, and I promised you a little bit of uh, side B, uh, which is uh, the Great White Way medley. Uh, it says the songs are "I Love Her," "Oh Oh Oh," 
and You Made Me Love You. The last one I'm familiar with. The first one I've never heard of. So we'll, we'll go out on that. But in the next episode, we're going to talk about the very precise speed of 78 Records established in 1925 and why it was done that way. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, join me again for the next episode of A History of 78s.